Are you struggling with money? Is money something that you are constantly worrying about in your life? Well, today's training is the perfect way for you to start to change all of that. Today, I am giving you my best tips for how to cultivate an abundance mindset and get you out of that scarcity mode that you have probably been living in. So if that sounds like something that you need, then be sure to keep watching. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jen. I am a subconscious manifestation coach and this is my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I really do appreciate you spending time in your busy week hanging out here with me. If this is your first time here and you have no idea what this channel is all about, well, let me get you up to speed on that before we dive into the video. This channel is where I create a brand new training for you each and every week, all about the art of creating your best life. And I do that through the tools of mindsets and manifestation. And most of what I talk about here is subconscious manifestation. So basically learning how to reprogram your subconscious mind so that you create the results that you want in your life on automatic. So if that sounds like something that you want to be a part of, then I'd encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification button just to make sure that you get notified every time a new video goes live. Okay, so let's get into the training. And as I said in the introduction today, I am giving you my best tips for how to create an abundant mindset. But before we get into the tips themselves, let's stop here for a moment and talk first about what exactly abundance is. So abundance is something that you have probably seen if you're in the world of law of attraction. Um, abundance is something that we talk about a lot, usually in relation to money. But first I wanted to talk about what the concept of abundance really is before we get into the rest of it because it really is about so much more than just money. If you are struggling with money though, these concepts today will have a lot of impact on you. So if you are struggling with money, this is the video for you. But I just wanna point out before we get into it that abundance is a really big concept and it applies to so much more in your life than just your financial situation. And the cool thing about that is, like I always say on these videos, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So when we start to understand what abundance really is and we realize that we're feeling a bit of lack around this, we can start to use the principles of abundance in other areas of our life and that will also help to eventually improve our financial situation. What we're really going to do here in this training today is to start to get you out of a scarcity mentality and into an abundant mentality. So like I said, before we get into it, let's talk about what those two concepts are. So first of all, let's talk about scarcity because scarcity is really the opposite of abundance and scarcity is really where most of us spend a lot of our life and that is because we have been programmed to think like this again so much of the stuff that i talk about on this channel really has to do with your subconscious mind and specifically with your subconscious programming that is where our programmed limiting beliefs and negative behavior patterns really come out and that is really all because we learned this stuff from the world around us when we were just children Basically, up until the age of about seven, you are basically your subconscious mind just wandering out there through the world without any kind of filter. And that means that you just kind of absorb all the energy and all the ideas of the people that you happen to be around. So now I want you to think back and think about what your family was telling you, specifically in regards to money, but about basically anything when you were a child. Did you hear any messages like, there's just never enough to go around or no matter how hard I work, there's just not enough money or any other sort of scarcity story like that. I definitely heard things like this when I was a child and so I can tell you that you probably did it too. Even if you came from a like quote unquote middle class background, money is just something that we have inherited a lot of beliefs about and a lot of those beliefs are scarcity beliefs. These are the beliefs that live in your mind and constantly tell you over and over again that there just isn't enough to go around. 
So this is the problem. If you are a child who is told over and over again that no matter how hard you work, you are never going to have enough money, you are going to take that in as a fact. You are not even going to question that anymore at a certain point. And even worse, now because this is a belief that lives in your mind, you are going to go out into the world and manifest that exact thing. That is why it is so crucial if you are really interested in consciously creating your life, it is so crucial for you to think about this stuff, to think about where your core beliefs came from. Even the things that you think you don't believe in, but are still playing out in your mind, that stuff can really have a big effect on your current adult life. Scarcity beliefs come from more than just our family though, they are also very much embedded into the culture of Western society. So we have all been groomed to have these capitalist ideas about the way the world works. And a lot of capitalism feeds on this idea. It feeds on the idea that we have to go out there and compete with each other. It feeds on the idea that there is not enough to go around. And the way capitalism creates value is by creating scarcity in the world in one way or another. For example, I always use the example of the diamond industry. Diamonds, of course, are just a rock that's found in the earth, just like the crystals that people love to make so much fun out of. But we have manufactured this incredible value about this thing. That doesn't really exist in the natural world. It is just another rock. Yet people are willing to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for these things because we think that they are scarce. So that is an example of how scarcity works. And when you're building a market economy, that of course makes sense for the bigger picture. Picture. But when it comes to us as humans, capitalism can be a super dangerous thing. So just as a side note, when I'm talking about this capitalism stuff, I'm not telling you to go out there and become an anarchist and throw away all your capitalist systems, but I am encouraging you, especially you spiritual people, to really think about how this stuff has had an impact on your life. And again, if you are interested in being a conscious creator, if you are interested in forming your reality, it is crucial that we question and examine every single belief that we have. And that includes the beliefs that, you know, the majority of the world buys into. It is really important to question even though. So the idea of scarcity goes hand in hand with capitalism um, because we as humans are taught that we need to work and we need to contribute and we need to be part of this machine. But that isn't really how nature works and that doesn't have to be the way that humans work either. That is the way that we're working right now, of course. But what I mean is before we had uh, you know, a system to measure the economy or something like that, when you were born as a human on the planet, you did not have to earn your living. You did not have to contribute to the system. It wasn't questioned whether or not you deserved something because you just showed up on this planet and you were deserving of having a place to live, of eating food, and of just surviving. So the very fact that we question these things and tie them to the output that we have in a certain day, that means that we are really buying into this idea of scarcity. We are buying this concept that we inherently are not enough and that we need to work in order just to live and just to survive, which is absolutely bonkers if you ask me. So all of that is just a prelude to say that scarcity is something that has been hard baked into us. And basically scarcity is any idea that there is just not enough to go around. So again, I'd like to counter that and come back to just thinking about the way humans would have been on this planet before, you know, modern structures of society. Earth is in a very abundant place. Like just go for a walk by yourself one day and just notice something in the world around you. You can notice how many little tiny pieces of grass there are in one field. You can notice how many leaves are on the trees when of course there are leaves on the trees. Now there are not here December in winter in Germany. Um, you can notice how many orange leaves are on the ground. You can notice how many waves are in the water. You can notice all of these things and see that nature is just filled and filled and filled with all kinds of things. The reality is that the real world, the natural world, is an incredibly abundant place. And the other reality is that we as humans, we are automatically deserving of being here and of having things in this world. And any programming that goes against that is something that we should question. And again, I'm not saying this so that we can go over and 
form a political movement, but just to kind of take up more space in this world and remember that you are here for a reason. Remember that you are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience, but you are here on purpose, my friend, and that means you get to take up space. So the way I really like to think about abundance and scarcity is like I'm always going back to the spiritual truth as there only being such thing as love. So love to me is abundance. Love is having enough and more. Love is having, you know, more than your needs met and more than what you want and more than what you ask for. And the opposite of that is scarcity. And scarcity to me resonates with fear. Fear, which is just a human condition. It is not something that actually exists in the world that we can point to. Fear is a limitation that we create for ourselves and scarcity is something that we create for ourselves. Anytime we opt into something that tells us there's not enough, that tells us we're not good enough, to, that tells us we need to hustle in order to be the person we want to be, we are buying into those fear and scarcity beliefs. And again, my barometer for telling if anything is true or not is always coming back to that. Is this coming from love or if this is coming from fear? And if it is coming from fear, I know that this isn't true. And the same thing applies to scarcity. Scarcity is one of the biggest fears, I would argue. But it's also an illusion. It also is not actually a real thing. It is something, again, that we have been programmed to see and to buy into. But what if you could undo all of that programming? And what if you could get back to the spiritual truth of you being only love and living in only abundance? What would it be like for you to go through life expecting abundance, expecting to have your needs met, not feeling like you need to earn something, not feeling like you need to become worthy of something before you get it? This seems like a radical idea, again, because we are all raised with a scarcity mentality. But opting into abundance doesn't mean you're not going to work hard. It doesn't mean that you're going to expect to get something for free, but it does mean that you are going to start to drop all of those beliefs that tell you that you are not enough the way you are. And that is really a radical way of thinking. But then again, I always say that self-love is one of the most radical things you can do for yourself. Um, but I can talk more about that another day. <laughs> okay, so now that we understand what scarcity is and what abundance is, what might be some problems? Like how would you know that you're suffering from um, a lack mentality, a scarcity mentality? The first telltale sign, of course, is if you are having sort of any money issues, if you are struggling with money, if you are constantly worrying about money, this is a very big sign that you have some abundance mindset stuff to do. However, like I said at the beginning of the video, abundance is really about so much more than money. It is such a big concept and it applies to all kinds of things. So I'm gonna give you a few more signs of a low abundance mindset first so you can see if you need to work on yours. And the second sign would be a constant feeling of worry or anxiety. So this might be worrying about how am I gonna pay my rent? Or maybe this is worried about what am I gonna do with this money that I do have? This is a constant sort of anxiety of never really feeling secure in what you have, never trusting that more is going to come in, and never really trusting yourself to know what to do with the stuff that you do have. So this kind of money mentality can look like all kinds of different things, and it can apply to many different areas of your life. But if you are in this sort of state of anxiety all the time, I would question how some of that fits into the scarcity mentality. And I would probably suggest to do this abundance work that I'm going to give you in a moment. The third sign that you are maybe struggling with an abundant mindset is that you are never feeling worthy of having what you have or of having more. So again, I'm gonna talk more about how to fix these things in a moment. But if you are always feeling guilt for the money that you do have, or if you're feeling like you have to become somebody different in order to have more, that is a very big sign that you are stuck in a scarcity mentality. Um, I will get more into this in just a moment, but to that, I just wanna say that you have to really remember that you were born a worthy person on this planet. And I know we have been programmed to think that we need to work hard and to study more and to get permission to have more, but you are already worthy and deserving and we really don't need any of these things from anybody else. The most important person that you get approval from and permission from is yourself. So if you are stuck in this feeling unworthy about any part of your life, then you definitely need this mindset work. 
Okay, and the last sign of having problems with an abundant mentality is that you never feel like you have enough. So this would be for the people that are overachievers, that maybe have a lot of money in the bank or that you know feel a bit of financial success but they still don't feel secure in what they have. So again, the scarcity mentality can go towards so much more than just what your bank account says. And part of the scarcity mentality is buying into this belief that I really have to hold on to what I have or that I don't trust in my ability to make more. And I'm constantly, constantly worried um, about making more because I think that I'm going to lose it or I think it's going to disappear somehow or that something is going to happen. Basically what this symptom is all about is about not trusting yourself it's about thinking that the way you got money was a fluke somehow and that you're not entirely sure that you could do it again it also has a lot to do with gratitude and not being grateful for where you are and whenever you're in that situation when you can't be grateful for where you are that makes it really difficult for you to go out there and to create more so if any of these symptoms are resonating with you, don't you worry. I'm gonna get into the tips right now and let you know how you can start to get to the other side, to snap out of the scarcity mentality and to get into the abundance mentality. Okay, tip number one for creating an abundance mentality is, I already just touched on this one, but I'm gonna go through it again because it's a really important starting place. But it is crucial for you to remember that the nature of reality and the nature of the universe is abundance. Anything that is showing you that there isn't enough to go around or that we have to compete with each other or that resources are scarce is not telling you the truth. Again, to really try to drill this concept into your mind, I would suggest really thinking on a time in the human life when we were not living in this modern society and when we were just, you know, humans, living off the land, um, what was that experience like? So when you were born as a little child onto this planet, nobody was ever looking at you like you didn't belong here. Nobody was sending a bill for a million dollars to your mother. <laughs> nobody was demanding that you buy a place to live or that you pay for the food or that you have to work really hard in order to be here. Like you were just born and you were a human and yay. And of course there's work involved with that. But it wasn't about earning your place at being at the table, which it seems like it is a lot nowadays. So I just want to remind you that that is actually the way that humans were. And we have, again, created this capitalist society that tells us that we are not worthy, that just by being here, we need to pay something, earn something, work for somebody. And that really isn't true. Uh, the world is an abundant place. Nature is an abundant place. And really, when you start to connect with that reality, it is so much easier, at least I find in my experience, to remember that you are okay. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more in one of the next points, so stay tuned. But this is a good place to start just remembering the abundant nature of the world that is the truth and anything that takes you away from that is not true tip number two for how to create an abundance mindset is to work on your gratitude so i also touched on this point a little bit already but it really is worth reiterating right here so the thing is we are a future focused society and of course even on this channel i'm always talking about goals for your future where are you heading next what do you want to create and that's amazing. That is an amazing part of life design and of you living up to your true potential as a conscious creator. But it can be a little bit of a slippery slope because when we get too much focused on what we don't have, we also forget to be grateful for how far we've come and for what we already have. So the thing is in life that you can have the most amount of money in the world and if you're not grateful for it it is not going to make you happy at the end of the day we are always going after the things that we want in life because of the way we think they will make us feel but you will never get that feeling that you want if you cannot let yourself stop and enjoy and take it in and be grateful for where you are so i think sometimes people get a little confused here because we think if we are taking a breath and being grateful and not always constantly focusing on where we want to go, that we are going to lose momentum or that we are going to not go as hard as we should towards our goals. 
And I just want to reiterate that that is completely untrue. And actually, sometimes when you take a step back and when you take a deep breath and when you take a moment to celebrate yourself and to have gratitude for yourself and for the universe, that little break can give you so much more momentum that you would not have if you were just constantly trying to move forward and never feeling satisfied. So it is really important if you want to create a happy life, and I know you do because that is why you are here. If you want to create a happy life, you need to work on the gratitude portion. And from a law of attraction perspective, what you concentrate on always expands. So when we were always pointing towards lack, we are going to create more and more lack in our life. But when you start to be grateful for what you have, you will start to see more of what you have and you will become happier and you'll attract more stuff into you. So again, this is a fine line. We all have to learn how to find our happy medium. But if you do not have a gratitude practice, I highly suggest that you start one now because it will make an amazing impact on your overall mental health as well as on your manifesting. Tip number three for creating an abundance mindset is really understanding that you are already inherently worthy and deserving. So this kind of touches on the first thing that I was talking about today, but let's go a little bit further into this part. But any idea that has been given to you that you are not worthy the way you are of what you want in life is something that you really need to learn how to question. And again, a lot of this stuff has been deeply programmed into us. Like, the example that I always use here is like, how many times do you see people complaining about the Kardashians because they quote unquote, don't do anything? Um, of course, I would argue that they very much do. <laughs> but I'm bringing that up because we have culturally these very embedded ideas about who deserves money for doing certain things and who does not deserve money for doing certain things. So you might be thinking about the Kardashians and thinking that whatever I think about them has nothing to do with my own results, but it actually really does because you are applying the same lens to everything. And if you are saying these people that have money didn't deserve that, then you are kind of telling yourself that you need to work harder and do more than that person if you want to get that result that they have. And that also sets you up for failure, of course, because of course, if you think that working harder is going to make you money, you are going to figure out sooner or later that that doesn't work. Of course, hard work is rewarded sometimes, but again, the thing that I like to bring up here is that you can probably think of the hardest working person you know, and that person is probably not the richest person that you know. So this idea that has been literally embedded into the TV shows we watch, into the books we read, into the schooling system, it really isn't provable in the real world. And so I want you to step away from all of that programming and just get really cozy with the idea that you are worthy the way you are. And again, this sounds weird and some people are like, Ugh, I don't want to feel like that. And I would really question why that is. And deeming yourself completely worthy and completely deserving just as you are, not after you lose weight, not after you get married, not after you get a certain car, not after you complete your schooling, whatever it is, just being worthy the way you are, it really is a radical concept. But I want you to question why that should not be the case. Why would you buy into anything that would tell you that that is not the case? The reality is you can have anything you want in this world. And all these stories that we create that tell us we can't have the things that we want until we do this or that or become this person, those things are just getting in our way. So what the world really needs is a self-love revolution and that really comes from feeling worthy the way we are. Yes, with the cellulite on our thighs. Yes, the person who presses the snooze button three times every morning. Yes, the person who didn't do that well at English in school or whatever other stories you have for yourself. What if all those things were true and you still got to be rich? How would that feel like? This of course is a huge topic but I'd really suggest that you dive into it if you're feeling resistance around this one. I know a lot of people feel resistance around this one, but that just really goes to show how much self-love work we need as a whole. Okay, tip number four for how to create an abundance mindset to take what we just talked about and just turn it a little bit. This is with getting cozy with the idea that you don't need to earn 
something, that you don't need to work hard, that you don't need to go out there and struggle for years or pay your dues or whatever in order to have what you want. Again, this is a super radical concept because we are literally programmed that if we work hard and pay our dues, we are going to get rewarded. And again, that is not necessarily true in the real world. So if hard work does not necessarily turn into what we want, then the question becomes, well, how do I get what I want? So what you really need to do is to start to give yourself permission to have what you want right now. So what if you could just have the promotion to the position that you want without putting in four years of hard work first? How does that feel and why would you want to resist that? How would it feel if you started a new business tomorrow and it started going like gangbusters and started, you know, doubling and tripling your income within the first year? How would that feel without you, quote unquote, paying your dues, hustling hard, doing things the hard way? What would it feel like if success just came easily to you? And again, if you're having any resistance around these ideas, I would really question about why that is. And again, capitalism has told us that we need to work hard in order to have things. And so this idea that we could just have things without working hard is a really radical concept. But just like worthiness being a radical concept, why can't ease be a radical concept? So I would really start to think about how you can apply that to your own mindset work so you can start to create more of an expectation around that and in turn remove some of those blocks that you were probably creating for yourself. Okay, my fifth tip for creating an abundance mentality is reprogramming those scarcity beliefs. So I already talked about a bunch of different things that you might need help with reprogramming. Um, but a, basically any like limiting belief idea that you have probably picked up in childhood, like there's just never enough to go around or money doesn't grow on trees, anything like that, that you can hear your parents saying in your head right now, that is something you probably need to reprogram because even though you might not be thinking about it consciously, it is still playing out in your brain like a computer program literally running on repeat endlessly unless you go in and change it. So the same thing applies to these ideas about worthiness. The same thing applies to these ideas about hustling and earning money. Um, can you just sit with these ideas and let them come to you? Most of us need a little bit of help to get past that bump. So I would really recommend doing some reprogramming work on your subconscious mind. And of course, there are a variety of ways to do that. You can book a hypnosis coaching session with me, for example, to get started. You could also use my subliminals on my subliminals manifestation YouTube channel, which I'll leave linked below. Um, you could also do some manifestation journaling, which is another technique that I find really helpful to do this. Um, but pick a technique and really start to implement this idea into your manifestation routine because your subconscious is just going to keep doing what it always does until you reprogram it. So the first step is awareness and identifying these things. And the second step is, of course, to take the action from your conscious mind and to start to reprogram for what you really want. Okay, my sixth and final tip for you guys today for how to create an abundance mentality. And this is really to start asking for more and expecting more. Uh, because again, sometimes we have been programmed to think in a scarcity mentality so much that we are even afraid to ask for what we really want. So if you are limiting your dreams, if you are censoring what you've asked for, if when you were a child you were told not to be too greedy or that you shouldn't expect too much, like why shouldn't I expect too much? Why is that such a horrible thing? Um, these again are things that we need to consider and a lot of us have been literally taught how to play small. You guys, it is time. To stop playing small and the only person who can give us permission to stop playing small is of course us our parents aren't going to come in and reprogram all that stuff it is all up to you and so i want you to give yourself permission starting right now right here today watching this video that it is okay for you to start wanting more acknowledging your desire for more money for more love for more whatever expecting to receive more of it expecting more of it to come into your world Remembering that money does not make you a greedy or evil person. Remembering that asking for more does not mean you are being selfish. None of this stuff means anything. When you stand up and claim one of your desires, that is you just becoming more of your truly authentic self, 
your self-actualized self. And that is really the big spiritual assignment that we are all here to create. So you need, again, to really start to think about anything that comes into your brain that tells you no, and to start working on that because that no that we create ourselves, that is the biggest abundance block of them all. And it's the trickiest one to locate. And it can come up in so many different ways. But again, giving yourself permission to ask for more and to receive more. Again, this can be a radical act. This can be the hugest sign of increasing your self-love and self-worthiness. And this is really where I would suggest that testing your abundance abilities truly comes into play. So again, the more resistance you feel about any one of these, the more you need to go in. And if you're feeling resistance about asking for more, baby, this one's for you. This is definitely for you. So go and think about what you can ask for more of and start to truly go out there and do that. Okay, so that is it for today's abundance mindset training. And I really hope that this has made some sort of impact on your life. Again, a lot of the things I talked about today really have to do with your subconscious mind and things we have been programmed to think over time. So these things that we have been programmed to think over time, let me just remind you, they are not authentic to you. They are not true to you. And you do not have to go through the rest of your life opting into any of these ideas. And in fact, again, if you identify as a conscious creator, if you want to consciously create your world moving forward, it is essential for you to start looking at this stuff questioning this stuff and reprogramming this stuff so that you can start to manifest more of the abundance that you are really after. So I know you're brought to this video today for a reason, and I really hope that you found that reason here today. Nothing is a coincidence. This one was meant for you, so please take what you need. And of course, I would love to know how you liked this. So if you're still watching this video, I would love it if you drop me a comment abundance below just so I can see how many of you made it to the end. If you like this, go ahead, give it a like. If you wanna learn more from me, I have a free Law of Attraction Planner for you to download on the site. I'll leave a link for that in the description box below as well. And other than that, I'll be back here in next week's training. So until then, I'm wishing you an amazing week and as always, happy manifesting. I love you guys so, so very much and I will see you soon.